Wouldn't it be great if you could walk into a store, pay a few dollars, and in return get some instant knowledge? George Washington became president on April 30th, 1789. Thomas Jefferson was the author of the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. Or how about this? A scientific breakthrough. A drink that would contain everything you'd ever want to know about, well, anything. Aardvark, a large burrowing nocturnal animal. Aardwolf, a hyena-like quadruped of South Africa. Abba, a fabric woven... Well, maybe someday. But for now, there's no getting away from the fact that learning, at least for most of us, is just plain hard work. Sure, there are lots of people who can help us. Librarians, teachers, parents, perhaps a big brother or sister, or another relative. But in the final analysis, it's up to you to do the real work. All that concentrating and reading, all that careful note-taking, and that studying. Simply put, there's no shortcut to learning. But there are some ways to study efficiently. Ways that can help you reduce the time you need to get the job done, while at the same time improve your grades. In some instances, improve them significantly. For most people, it's simply a matter of forming good study habits. And that's what this program is all about. If you're beginning to feel the pressures of doing more homework and more complicated classwork, or if your teachers now expect you to take more responsibility for your learning, then you'll want to pay particular attention because we're going to give you a pathway to follow, one that will lead you to the kind of study habits most kids need to be really successful in school. The first step on the pathway? Create a positive attitude. I may not be a genius, but if I learn how to study right, I can really do much better in school. I want to improve my grades, and I know if I really apply myself, I can do it. That's the idea. A positive attitude says you can do it, yet not without some effort. The next step, form a partnership with your teacher or teachers. Class dismissed. Think of it this way. You and your teacher have a common purpose, to increase your knowledge and skills. But because your teacher can't read your mind, at least not always, you need to speak up whenever you need help. Mrs. Street, can I ask you a question? Of course, Kevin. What can I do for you? Well, I didn't understand the differences between similes and metaphors. Could you go over that again for me? Sure. Come over here. Most teachers are more than happy to hold up their end of the partnership whenever a student shows genuine interest in the classwork. No doubt about it. A student-teacher partnership is an important step. Even so, as we've said, you're the one who has to take the main responsibility. Nobody can do your learning for you. So why not study in a place that will make the job easier? Your special study place. Setting up your special study place is the third step on the road to good study habits. Your study place should be comfortable, but not too comfortable. Think of it this way. Well, I guess in this case you could dream of it. Bank guards can't do their job very well if they're too comfortable, and neither can cooks or any other job holder. Well, when you're doing your homework, your job is to study. And a bed doesn't make a good study place because it's so easy to become too comfortable there. A desk in a quiet room, on the other hand, provides the right amount of comfort for most people. It should be well lit, and all your study materials should be within easy reach. Textbooks, spiral binders, notebooks, pencils, pens, paper, erasers, and so on. If you need to get up to look for books or other items, such as rulers or scissors, you could become distracted. That is, your attention could be pulled away from your studies. And speaking of avoiding distractions, it's a good idea to place your study area away from any windows where you could look outside and daydream. CD players, radios, and stereos are other distractions to be avoided. Some students say that listening to music helps drown out other sounds and helps them concentrate. But it's more likely that they just like listening to the music. You see, the human brain can concentrate on only one thing at a time. That's just the way it works. So it's either music or studies, but not both. In other words, if someone's concentrating on some great sounds on a CD, 
She's not concentrating on her studies. That's better. In a perfect world, everyone would have a quiet study space in their own home. But we all know it's not a perfect world. So lots of kids need to go someplace else, perhaps their community library, or their school's resource or learning center. Either of those may be a good choice for you. If not, you might be able to study at a friend's home, as long as both of you understand that study time is not a time to socialize. Speaking of time, let's move on to the fourth step on the road to good study habits. Make a study schedule that blocks out your time and then follow it. That will prevent this uh -huh. from happening. Ah! <laughs> well, if you've ever been in that predicament, you already know what the results usually are. And it's not a pretty sight. A study schedule and you're following it will go a long way to prevent those last-minute panics and substandard work. Making a study schedule isn't difficult. All you have to do is write time slots along the left side of the page, say from 3.30 in the afternoon to 9 at night, and then write each day of the week across the top. Next, you simply jot down in the appropriate space the subject to be studied. Let's say you've decided to begin your homework with arithmetic every day at 3.30. And from experience, you know that you normally spend about a half hour on that subject. So that's what you would write on your schedule. By the way, many study skills experts think it's a good idea to start with a subject that's easy for you and then move on to the more difficult ones. It's also best to study one subject at the same time every day. That can set a good study pattern. Now, it may take several weeks, maybe even a month, before your schedule is exactly as you like it. You just have to keep revising it until it's right. Notice that there are some blank spaces. That's time set aside for emergencies or for last minute changes, perhaps when you have to help with some household chores because your mother has to work late. One other thing you'll want to keep in mind don't forget to allow some time for study breaks, perhaps five or ten minutes between each subject, to grab a snack, feed the fish, shoot some hoops, or do anything else that'll rest your brain for a few minutes. However, it's probably a good idea to stay away from an activity in which you can really lose yourself, such as a video game or a favorite TV show. More than likely, the time you'll devote to them will be more than the five to ten minutes you've set aside for a break. Now, one final note. All the steps we've mentioned can't be mastered by doing them once, or even twice or three times. They have to be done again and again, until each becomes a natural part of your day. Repetition. That's what it takes to form a habit, a good one or bad one. And when you think about it, it just makes sense to create good habits, especially now when the bad ones aren't firmly set. Moreover, good study habits will serve you well throughout your entire school career. That's pretty much a given. But they'll also serve you well beyond school. Because businesses change so fast today, and they may change even faster in the future, adults find it necessary to study too in order to keep up with all those changes. And the better their study habits, the greater their chances for success. So why not hop on that pathway now? You can do it if you create a positive attitude, form a partnership with your teacher or teachers, set up your own special study place that's well lit, quiet, and has all your study materials easily at hand, and if you make and follow a study schedule. Best of all, it's not that difficult. You can do it.